Hey there, in this short video we're going to run through the features required to draw something that looks like this Schlitter. So uh, we'll open up a new part and to begin with we'll start a sketch of a circle on any of the planes really, but I'm going to start off with this front plane. I'm going to hit the space bar and look normal to it. Now be very careful to definitely start at the origin and draw a circle and give that any old dimension you feel like. I'm going to maybe dimension it to have a diameter of 80. And in that, I could have drawn a semicircle, but I also want to show you the trim command here. So I will draw a line from the top. I actually missed there. I'll try that again. A line from the very top to the bottom. So to trim away half of that circle, you can use this trim entities tool. Now, you could try trim to closest, but I like to use this power trim option, which means if I click anywhere in the blank area of the screen and hold the left mouse button, I can get this little trail as I move around and as that trail crosses a line it trims it away. So we're in good shape there let's just check a fully defined sketch yes so press the green tick to close the trim command and this blue exit button to leave the sketch. Now we're going to go to features and then revolved boss base and select that vertical axis revolving that semicircle into a sphere. So there we've got the main shape of it. So if I select the top plane, you can see the top plane perfectly bisects it. Uh, if it doesn't, it simply means you haven't drawn your semicircle centered at the origin. So on that top plane, I'm going to start a sketch of a rectangle, but I want this center rectangle. I hit the space bar and normal too. I'm going to snap onto the origin very carefully, and then make sure one of the points snaps and locks onto the outer edge, the circumference in this case, of the circle. Tap escape. I also want this to be a square, so tap escape a couple of times to clear the memory. And holding control, select the top and the side of the rectangle. And I want those to be the same length. So I can press this equals constraint there, or I can press the word equal over to the left. Now that's perfectly square. And down in the corner again, I see fully defined, which is what I'm after. Uh, blue icon to close the sketch. Now, so that's a rectangle in the center, and all four points are square, rather, all four points lie on the surface of the sphere. So let's now pick the front plane, and I'm going to start a sketch on the front plane of a line, space bar, normal two. Now somewhere up here, being very careful to snap onto the circumference, let's click there, draw a line horizontally across until it snaps onto the circle the other side. And make sure you see those two icons, a yellow horizontal and a yellow snap icon. There's the horizontal green one, there's the... Um, snapped on green one. They're yellow as they're being applied but when their constraints are applied they turn green. So for example if I drag that blue line it'll go anywhere as long as it remains horizontal and as long as both points remain on the circumference. So let's just give that a value. I'm not really sure what value to make it so let's make it 55 for now. And again double check and fully defined. So that was on the front plane. If I now go to the right plane and start a sketch of a line again space bar 90 degrees to I'm looking at 90 degrees to that previous line so we will do the same thing this time at the bottom snap onto the left a horizontal line across snapping onto the right hand side of the circle again I'm going to tell that to be a measurement of 55 uh, you can make that whatever size you want and press the exit sketch so those three sketches are just there as construction geometry because those two endpoints and those two endpoints of those lines also rest on the surface of the sphere so with the sketch open, uh, or the sketch tab selected rather, let's press the drop down arrow beside spline and select spline on surface. And be very careful, I'm going to click this point and rotate the model so the point is in view, this corner point of the square. Let's pick this bottom end point of the line and rotate the model as you go. Top point there, that point there. And that point there. Now I find if you misclick, you nearly always have to start that spline again. So if you do misclick and miss a point, just start it again. And you know you've done it right because when you make the loop, when you close up and snap onto the last point, it should smooth it over like that. So there's the path for our uh, shape, the little black grip piece. So let's just pick a plane. I'm going to pick maybe the front plane and look 90 degrees to it. And I want that little grip to start there on the curve at the edge. Just to line myself up, I'm going to pick a center line and go from the center of the circle to that point and just extend it on a little bit as a construction. I'm now going to pick a three-point center rectangle and zoom in. The first click will be that point where the curve and the line meet right there. Second point is going to give the direction, so it's going to be on that line somewhere. 
and the third point is going to be the width of it. So I'm not going to waste any time setting that. Um, oh, well, I will. Let's just very quickly. Let's just quickly set that to be maybe three mil, and let's just set that to be I don't know, say two mil. And if you absolutely want to make sure that's locked in, it has twisted a little bit. You can hold Control, select that line, and select that line, and add a perpendicular constraint. At least it'll lock it in like that. So now leaving that sketch, we can simply sweep that shape around the curve. So go to Features, Swept Boss Base. Uh, the profile is going to be the rectangle and the path is going to be the curve. Now that looks good but in some cases that might actually twist as it goes around and it won't look the part. Depending on the version of uh, SOLIDWORKS you have you'll either have to go into options or guide curves but in my version from 2016 forward what you're looking for is minimum twist or follow path make sure you select follow path rather than keep normal constant but nearly always minimum twist is what you're after. So press the green tick and there you have that. Now I want to hide each of those sketches because they weren't actually consumed or used so let's hide those and then it's just a matter of getting over here to your material and appearances let's go to plastic I find a low gloss plastic works best because this isn't an incredibly glossy material so let's just bring on white low gloss plastic onto the revolve feature and a black low gloss plastic onto the sweep so we just finished this off by putting a decal onto that surface. So to do that, I'm going to move over to PowerPoint where I can just edit my decal. I'm going to go to Insert, Pictures, and just drop in a logo that I've taken from the internet. This has a clear back, or a white background rather, and I want a clear background. So let's double click the image, select Color, Set Transparent Color, and then click the color you want to remove. In this case, white. So there's the clear background, but I need to save this out as a PNG file because a PNG file can remember a clear background. So let's go right click, Save as picture. Let's change it to a PNG file. I just call this logo clear and save that. So back in SolidWorks, let's go to render tools and then edit decal. And if you happen not to have that tab, you can go to the fifth icon up there, the display manager, and in the middle icon there, which is the view decals um, toolbar. So right click this blank area and select add decal. It'll bring you to the same place. So browse for the file, let's find it, it's on my desktop, it's called logo clear. Then click the face that you want the logo to be applied to. Now it usually comes in a little bit off like that, so we're going to go to mapping and we're going to go to, rather than spherical, we're going to go to projection and then instead of selected reference, let's select current view. So now you can resize the image with the little corners, you can move it by positioning it um, as you wish by clicking anywhere inside that frame and you can rotate it with those yellow icons if you wish the yellow bar there rather so uh, you can also input the values down here so for instance I've got one degree in there I can rub that out and put in zero degrees uh, the black background is just a memory saving technique SOLIDWORKS uses so I'll just make that smaller what we will do is go back to image and go down to use decal image alpha channel and that will make it clear so there you have it so uh, the decal, by the way, if it ever spills or if it ever distorts, you should apply it while the screen is looking directly in at the, the face that you want to apply the decal to.